I heard a uh, rodeo champion. He said, when I wanted to become a champion, I started getting around the best and competing with the best so that I can become the best. Put yourself in the rooms of where you want to be because iron sharpens iron. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Andrea Ingstrom, a real estate investor and business coach and co-founder of the Partnership for Realtors. And I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the best-selling book, Without Fear of Her Future. Over the past two years, Teresa has had nearly 200,000 join her masterclass, where she teaches women how to become successful real estate investors. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Andrea. <laughs> Well, today we have a guest that's very special to both of us. Yes. And so I am so excited to have Clifford Walker. He just came out with his new book, a new release, Roadmap to Success, where he shares strategies to transform your life, to become the person you want to be, doing what you want to do, and creating the life of your dreams. From being a truck driver to becoming a real estate investor, he shares practical advice and actionable steps to develop the mindset and habits of a successful person. So Clifford, I am so excited to welcome you to the podcast. Ooh, doggy, what's <laughs> going on? Well, thank y'all so much for having me. And I'm extremely blessed and honored and grateful that y'all even Consider this old country boy to be on. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you're looking snazzy, representing the, the women pink. in pink. Yes, I man. love it. I love it. I and had to Andrea, represent. Am I right that Clifford is our very first male? He yes. is the first dude in history to be on <laughs> Without Fear of Her Future a podcast. So congratulations uh -oh. on that. But we're so no, excited about your book. No pressure. No pressure. Yes. At all. <laughs> hey, yes. uh, Clifford is uh, very comfortable being amidst the women because he is also, he was the very first male coach for the Women's Real Estate Investors Network. And yes. um, the, the women love the way you pour into them. Well, yes. if they, they make it easy and I definitely love being here and and serving y'all and blessing y'all in, in any way that I can help. Well, I'm, I'm I know you do. It. it shows. Well, tell us who this book is for, because this book is not just for women. That's for sure. No. So. <sighs> yeah. So my book, Roadmap to Success, which I'm really excited about, um, it's for anybody that wants to transform their life and wants to learn practical tips and habits that will help you. Because one thing that I noticed when I got started, there's so much information out there and people are like, but where do I start? Mm -hmm. And it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I like to keep things super simple. I think that you can't scale complicated. So simplicity is the key. And I took that in mind or I kept that in mind rather even when I was writing the book to keep it simple so people can put practical steps into place to, to help them move along this journey. Absolutely. Why do you believe that Roadmap to Success is such a timely message for today? Well, I feel it's a timely message for today is just the uncertainty of the world. I think that one thing that the whole pandemic and COVID and recession or non-recession we're in and inflation, people are scared, people are nervous, people are unsure of how to move and what their future looks like. And so I wanted to give them again, practical tips that no matter what the rest of the world is saying, you can keep your life moving kind of upstream, so to speak. Woo. I love that. I love that. Okay. I, I have been blessed to have a front row seat from the beginning of your real estate investing career and to just watch your success as an invest, investor. And so I want you to share with our listeners, what has your career looked like and what kind of investing do you personally do? Um, 
Well, definitely my success has helped uh, because I had amazing coaches. <laughs> so thank you for that. But um, I still do anything basically with single family housing from the rentals to the flips to the wholesaling. Um, yeah, that's not going to stop ever. I don't think. There you go. Awesome. Okay. And, and everybody, I think everybody in Reen knows that, that, uh, who my favorite coach was when I joined the women's real estate investors network. Um, and I'm not even shy about it. I'm like, Clifford's my favorite. I love you, Teresa, but I love Clifford as my coach. Um, but for me, part of that was just, you're, you're so kind and so patient when you're explaining some things that I think some of us feel overwhelmed with when we get into investing and you just break it down and make it so simple. And that's exactly what you, you do in your book. But, um, but let's go back to a step here. Like talk about how you got connected to Teresa and Kelton and Justin, the Todd brothers. Uh -huh. So what was it? You know, it's almost four years now. It's oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, Crazy. but I saw an ad, <laughs> yeah, like, like many of you all, <laughs> inviting me to a workshop that that y'all were doing uh, in person workshops, and it was a three day event. And so I went to it, and I was just glued like to all of the information and knowledge that they were sharing, and practical advice too. Because prior to like I had went to some other events where they spend the entire time talking about how rich they are, how much money they have, <laughs> <laughs> showing pictures of fancy cars and all that. But no, y'all were actually giving value. And that's what helped me and then drew me to y'all. Awesome. That's how, that's how I got my start. Yeah. So you started and you, you attended a workshop. It was live in person at that time. And then you, you kept working with them and then, and then they, and then they brought you on board and they're like, now we need you to teach, <laughs> to teach the the people. So I love that story. Well, in the, in the book, you, you talk about staying consistent when the motivation starts to wear off. So you've been doing this for a little while and, um, you know, I'm just a couple years into, into my, my time as an investor, but, um, in that sounds like a short amount of time, but there are times when you're, when you're in the grind of it and things aren't going your way and, and we can get discouraged. Um, so I love, I love the part where you say staying consistent when you are alone, unmotivated, and no one is watching is going to make all the difference. So would you just share some strategies with us? How do you recommend people stay on track even when they don't feel like doing the work, even when it gets real hard? I, I think that what helped me stay consistent is in when things got a little bit tough was one, my relationship with God. I knew that, you know, greater is he that is in me, right? So I, I kind of leaned on my faith quite a bit when things started getting a little bit shaky. And even when things are good, I'm still leaning on my, on <laughs> yeah. my faith. But that was a big one for me. And then just knowing my why and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, I truly believe that we are building generational wealth by serving other people. Like, I, I almost feel like it's my responsibility to do this now, mm -hmm. because if I'm not doing it, then I'm not able to bless and serve other people. And so I kept little reminders of that stuff around my office and mirror. I'm kind of cheesy in that sense. I have affirmations everywhere to to keep me keep me in the right mind space. I love that. Well, I just want to say that this past Sunday, I sat down on my sofa and I read your book cover to cover. And so it, it's a combination of so many things. First of all, it is sweet. I mean, I just it's a sweet story. But at the same time, it's so powerful and so practical. So I want every single person listening to this to just jump on Amazon and get the book roadmap to success and it's it's such a great beginning point for every single investor well even if you're you know already done a few deals you need to read clifford the cowboy closer um <laughs> hey, we got to read his book i think we should just take a second to talk about that name 
Uh -huh. um, I want to ask you this because uh -huh. I remember when you came out and you declared that you were Clifford, the cowboy closer, had you actually closed a deal at that time? Or is that when you got those first like five or six that first month? Yeah. What's funny is it, it, the name came from Brandy actually. So when, when I started closing those deals, like that first month, I got like six deals. Wow. And Brandy was like, wow, I guess you're just the cowboy closer, aren't you? And <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck. And I'm like, you know what? I am. I that's exactly that. right. And that's the kind of confidence that we mm -hmm. need when you begin to declare yourself and exactly how you just uh, immediately came home from that three day workshop and mm -hmm. posted in, uh, you changed your Facebook status. I to did. Real estate investor. I did. A lot of people don't know that. Like at that event, I literally had made a decision. Like at that moment, I said, I, I am going to do this. No if, ands and buts about it. And so I actually changed my occupation status on Facebook to real estate investor. And what people don't know is that actually notifies like all of your friends and family that you've updated your career. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute, yesterday you were a truck driver. Exactly. <laughs> like, wait a minute, I know you, you ain't got no money. How are you a real estate investor now? <laughs> and that is the beautiful thing is that you don't have to have money to um, become a real estate investor. And I believe that that is the, the biggest myth in this industry yeah. is that people think that it's for the rich and the famous and the celebrities that have the ability to become an investor. And that is just not the case, especially with the three of us right here today. Yes. All of us, I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I was, you know, broke making $60,000 a year when I got started and had no idea. Yeah. And I, can second that. I was right behind you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, what are you hoping that readers would take away from your book? One of the biggest things that I want people to take away is one, I want them to have confidence and faith in themselves to know that they can, whatever that goal is, um, whether that's real estate investing or starting ministries or even writing books. You know, there's there's so much that that people want to do. And I just want them to build confidence in themselves and know that they can and then have practical things that they can use that keep them moving uh, in the right direction, so to speak. Perfect. One of the things I also loved about this book is your reflection prompts. So at the end of each chapter, you ask a question that we're supposed to and then you give us some space to to write about it. And it's and your book is such a digestible read like it it doesn't take days and days you know, like mm -hmm. it's a it's a quick read but there's these moments where you ask questions at the end of every chapter and it's for personal reflection and as a coach i love this because um you know as a coach we ask the questions it's not very often that people are asking us the questions about like yeah. reflecting on your your background and i hope everybody has has mentors and coaches in their life that are asking them good questions but whether you do or whether you don't pick up this book because at the end of every chapter there's really deep personal reflection that you can do and I and I stopped every single you'd be so proud of me, coach. Clifford. <laughs> um, I stopped I and I wrote. It. Yeah, I wrote about what I was thinking and like what 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 uh, what what inspiration was coming to mind and like what did I need to do next? Like what do I need to do to take action based on what I'm reading? And so I felt like I had my own roadmap for success when I finished reading this book. And so thank you for that. But like what inspired that idea? It was just me kind of reflecting too on how I like to read and enjoy books. So I don't, I like to engage in a book. So I'm the person that writes notes all over it, mm -hmm. highlights on it, maybe spill some coffee on it. Yes. You know, so <laughs> I, I was thinking like, how can we get more people engaged? I, I didn't want it to be just a book they read just to say they read it. You know, because I'm noticing there's also a common theme now in the success space where people say read 52 books a year. Well, that's great if you don't. But if you don't do anything with any of them or they don't cause you to think yeah. or, or take action, then I think that it's it's 
not so good, maybe. I don't Just know. Checking a box, like, yeah. 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 But but I wanted them to or people to stop and take a moment to think it through. And then when I was telling Brandy that, she was like, let's do some reflection pages at the end. I'm like, perfect, let's do it. <laughs> Your wife is brilliant. Yes, she She's is. She's a good one. Yes, awesome. She is. Well, what was your process for writing the book? Did it come pretty easy for you or was it like a grind to get it out into the world? Um, it was actually really easy, surprisingly. So if people follow me on Instagram, they know that my evening spot is the fire pit in the patio. Like just about every night I'm out there just praying, reflecting and, and hanging out, kind of bringing my day to a, a close. And I was sitting there just doing that, reflecting and, and thinking about how much growth has happened within me personally over the last three years or so. And I'm like, man, I should write a book. You know, like I had this just warm desire out of nowhere. Like I hadn't even talked about a book prior to. And uh, it, it, I felt like that was God calling me or, or the bourbon, either one. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I literally at that moment grabbed my computer. So every night I would go out there and just write a little bit and, and jot down my feelings. And so it, for me, it was really easy because I was speaking from my heart and my personal experience. Mm, I love that. And you know what I what I really want to point out to our listeners is Clifford, just the same way you wrote the book is the same thing that you do everything in life. Once, I mean, you had the idea, I should write a book. So you just wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the same thing when you did, you came to a three day seminar and you just decided I'm going to be an investor and then yeah. you just go about doing it yeah. and you really do have such a gift to make things seem easy. You make things, you make investing easy for our, our, our students. You make writing a book sound easy because I did not have that same experience <laughs> when I wrote my book. So um, I just, that's so powerful that, you, and, and we could all just learn from this. Just do the thing, quit thinking about the thing, mm -hmm. quit talking to 14 other people about the thing and just do the thing. Absolutely. And well, thank you for saying that. I guess I never notice that about myself, but I do. And I, I think I don't, I'm not an overthinker, right? So yeah. for me, I just like to figure things out, you know, as I go. And I know that when I jump in on the deep end, I'm going to learn how to swim or sink either one. Yeah. But even with real estate investing, like that's what I try to tell our ladies. Like I see so many people trying to build a Ferrari in a garage and they don't even have a driver's license. Like, let's yeah. put some wheels on a cardboard box and get to rolling. Like, yeah. everything else we kind of figure out as we're in the meat and potatoes of things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we worry, We tend to worry about problems that are like million dollar problems that we got ten dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, it's like wait, wait till you get wait till you get a little closer to there. Yeah. Um, well, you've done some some awesome things. Um, tell us what's next for you. What are your goals? Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking New York Times bestseller. Hey. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, Nick. Um, I, I would like to actually continue to spread the message um, and, and help people become a better version of themselves. Um, not just in life, but in real estate and every other area. Um, I also want to just serve people. Like, I don't know, like it's it's any way that that God can use me, I ask him to use me. Like, I know that's not a, a definite thing, but my prayer is God bless me to serve the people you want me to serve in a way that's pleasing to you. And, and that's kind of just where I am and letting that go through me however god see fit I, I know that's probably not a textbook you know <laughs> answer okay. but yeah well and that's again that's what you have done you have also created a nonprofit. so tell the ladies a little bit about that nonprofit. yes cowboys for the community so um we are a nonprofit, a tax exempt 501c3 and 
um, every single month on the third Saturday, we go to the hood. I'm talking <laughs> about the hood, hood. All right. <laughs> uh-huh. And um, we pull up at a vacant lot and I literally fire up the grill and we cook um, whatever that week. And so last month we fed 208 people. Wow. They just come up and get a hot meal. And I absolutely love it because one, everybody deserves a hot meal and I love to eat. Uh, <laughs> number two, I don't feed people anything that I don't feed my family. Like if y'all come over to the house and we're eating lobster and prime steak, well, guess what? That's what I'm feeding everybody else too, because that's what I eat. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I I love it. I just love your heart for servanthood. And I believe that that is part of why God has just blessed you the way he has. And I know that there are more books coming. I know that there are more, there's a lot more in the future for Clifford, the cowboy closer. And I am so excited to see what all that looks like. Well, thank thank you. I'm excited. So Clifford, we always like to ask our guests for three takeaways. So what are three things that you would advise an investor or an entrepreneur who is looking to be brave and grow or is perhaps feeling stuck where they are? Um, Three things. Number one, please don't overthink it. You know, when I got started on the whole book, I could have easily talked myself out of it. Well, who's going to want to listen to me or... You know, where am I going to find a publishing company and all of these other things? Like I could have came up with a hundred reasons on why I shouldn't do something versus the three reasons on why I should. So don't talk yourself out of what God is calling you to do. And I think that a lot of people actually do that. Um, Number two, remember that. What's the best way to say this? Put yourself in the rooms of where you want to be. Okay. I, I think it's very, very powerful. Um, get connected to people who are doing what you want to do or inspired to do because iron sharpens iron. You know, I heard a uh, he's a he's a rodeo champion, but he said when I wanted to become a champion, I started getting around the best and competing with the best so that I can become the best. And I'm like, wow, that's so powerful because that's what we need in in our lives, not just in business, but in our relationships. Like get around people who can sharpen you and help you to grow. And number three, consistency, I think is the biggest part because you're going to find hurdles and bumps and and all kind of things to overcome. But that consistency is what's really going to keep it moving forward. So those three right there, and I promise you, you'll find success in just about any area that you want. But they can connect with me through the ring. I am a coach, so definitely join the ring. Uh, I'm on the social media, Clifford Walker. And and Clifford, you have a podcast yourself, right? Yeah. I do. Books, Bourbon, and Business. Ooh. All right. So everybody look that up on Spotify, yeah. iTunes, right? Books. Yeah. Say it again. Books, Bourbon, and Business. Books of bourbon and business. Yeah. Y'all we need to be love. take a listen. <laughs> yeah. Well, Clifford, we are so, so proud of you and so proud to be um, and a part of your inner circle of, of, uh, of other coaches and, and friends. And so thank you so much for being with us today and sharing with our listeners and sharing your message with the world. It's such an important message and it really, it really was impactful for me to, to go through your book and, and actually take the action that, that you, you lined out for us as a coach. So thank you. I love it. I'm waiting on yours. I know it. I know it. I keep hearing that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Andrea Ingstrom, encouraging you to be brave and dream big.